What is up, creator? It is awfully good to see you. Today, right now, right here, we're gonna learn how to set up the Snaz countdown timer for OBS. Let's get some. Big shout out to Soldiers3000 for letting me know about Snaz. Go over to his channel and check him out. And I want to let you know that if you have an idea for the channel and it fits what I'm doing here, I will make a tutorial for you and give you a shout out. So let me know in comments. I, I read, read them, them all. Finding the download link for Snaz is really simple. I will provide a link in the description to show you where to go. But all you have to really do is open up a new tab and type in download Snaz. And the first link that you see is the link to the GitHub website that contains the software. So click that link. And then there is a link called Download Snaz. Simply click that and it will take you to a page with various versions. Now I want to let you know that versions after 1.12.6.0 will not work with Twitch due to stability reasons. So if you want it to work with Twitch, you're going to have to use 1.12.6.0 or before, okay? But after that, you're, it's not going to work for Twitch. I just wanted to make sure that Twitch users understand that. So what I'm going to do right now is just download the exe file by clicking Snaz Setup exe, and then we'll begin to install. Snaz is PC only. If you're a Mac user and you're looking for a solution, let me know in comments, and I will find you a program that will do the same thing. Ever since the virus scare with the OBS Virtual Cam plugin, I'm a little bit more sensitive now to installing software onto my computer from the OBS world. I'm not 100% sure if there was a virus with the software. I will be making a video in the near future about it, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is take the exe file that I just downloaded and run it against VirusTotal for the first time live on camera. So I'm going to go to the website now. Here it is, VirusTotal. I'm going to choose the exe file, which is snazsetup.exe. And boom, it's going to scan it against multiple programs. Wow, that was really fast. Much faster than I thought. And it looks like it's 100% clean. There were a couple programs down here at the bottom that were not used for some reason, but it looks like it's clean. There's no engines detected in the software. We are good to go for install. Here we go. Okay, here we go for the install. Let's go to the file. All right, we'll hit yes. English. And it's going to put it in, oh, look at that. It doesn't put it in the program files. It puts it in a subfolder in your root of your C drive. That's interesting. We'll hit next. And set up, we'll create a program shortcut called Snaz. Hit next. And create a desktop shortcut. Yep. Hit next. And install. And finish. Okay, here's the Snaz program opened up on my computer. And I just want to give you a global perspective of what this program can do for you on your live stream, okay? There's various tabs at the top. We're in the uh, time, date, and countdown area. So the first section on this page here will give you a dynamic time for your live stream. The next one will show you a date. And the one below that will give you a countdown to a specific time. To be honest, I don't know if this page is going to provide that much value for you because, for example, you could type in your own date. The time might be useful, but the countdown to specific time, I really don't think you'll get much use out of it. The next one, though, which is the chrono tab. This one provides a countdown timer and a count up timer. And you can tell the system to trigger the count up when the countdown gets to zero, which is pretty cool. And we'll touch on that in just a couple secs here. The next one is the text line changer. And this basically allows you to enter blocks of words, okay, one word per line. And when you uh, specify the, the time increment, it will show one word, then switch over to the next word after that increment goes by. The next one is the system information. So you can put this into your system and it will show you the current CPU usage, your RAM usage, and all that cool stuff, which is interesting. And then finally, the next tab, which we're not going to cover in this video because it's pretty intense. But um, you can insert PHP into this thing and you can have it trigger events like show images, which is pretty cool. So let's dig into the time, date, and countdown. I'll go over the parameters and you'll get your head wrapped around how this thing works. It's not difficult. And uh, upon me explaining that, all the other tabs will become much easier to use. Here we go. Okay, here we are uh, looking at the time. And I want to go over the output format and the flow by which the dynamic information is imported into OBS. And the reason why I want to get into these two parameters is because upon you understanding this, you can apply it to just about every other section inside of SNAZ. Okay, let's look at the blue fields that are shown 
in each section that represents the live output and initially when you start up SNAS for the first time it's showing you military time if you want to switch it over to AM PM you can do that there's a little checkbox called times AM and PM it's a little checkbox to the right there and it automatically switches it over now you'll notice that the live output doesn't reflect the AM PM so if you need to sort of like refresh it to have it re-grab the new changes this little square box to the right of the output format will get it to start up and re-grab it so it's showing the right thing. The live output again is what you will see in your live stream, okay? Now if you want to remove, say, the hours, for example, you can highlight the dollar $H, which re represents the hour, and just delete it, and it goes away. Now we're just outputting minutes and seconds, which is really cool, right? You can also type in words to the left or right of the output format, so I could type in the time is, right? Let's make that a capital I and make a dash. And it automatically changes in the live output. That's pretty cool. And you can separate the time with dashes or periods or whatever you want. And you can put text at the end. See? Boom. So that gives you some flexibility as to how you format the time. The path that is shown to the text file. What's happening is this text file here called time.txt is being resaved incrementally, like every half second so that that current dynamic time is shown on the on that file and when you load it into OBS OBS is re-grabbing it incrementally to display that updated time it's really kind of rudimentary but actually pretty cool and slick because it just works well I will show you how to set that up it is not difficult we'll be setting up a text GDI source and putting that path in there so that it reflects the dynamic content can't wait to show you let's get started Okay, here we have an instance of OBS running. I've got a scene that's been set up with a looping background and some text. And what we're going to do is we're going to add dynamically generated time into this thing. So if I go back to SNAZ here, I'm looking at my live output to make sure that it's doing what I want. Correct. I'm showing the hour. I'm showing the minute and the seconds. The times in AM PM is checked off, so we've got that AM in there, which is great. It is actually 12 o'clock at night here, guys. I literally work all night long on this channel, I kid you not. Sunday at 12.01 and I am alive and awake and loving it. Let's go. Okay, so you can't copy path to clipboard. It doesn't work. OBS does not allow you to paste that path in there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's move this out of the way and I'll click the plus sign underneath sources and select text GDI and we're going to name it timer, okay? Or I'll call it the time. How about that? There we go. Hit OK. Now I'm going to type the word time in here. And the only reason why I'm doing this is so that I can see what font I'm creating. So this will be replaced with the actual time. So you can type anything you want in there. But again, I'm doing that so I can see the effect of the font and the size that I'm selecting. So I'll select the, this button here, select font. And I'm going to make it Anton, which is super like a thick looking font. And make sure that the size is really big. Currently, it's at 256. That's huge. And that will work. I'll hit OK. And now I'm going to check off the read from file. As you can see, it doesn't allow me to paste anything in there. So you have to click Browse. And um, in this case, I'm in my C drive. And I'm inside SNAZ. And then I want to click this text file folder and select the time.txt and hit open. And as soon as I do that, it replaces the word time with the dynamically generated text. Now the last thing I need to do is simply change the color real quick, hit OK, and then hit OK again, and boom, there you go. It's working good. Let's pretend you're having a live show with a countdown, and when it reaches zero, a count up occurs, and you will then, after it reaches an hour, you'll shut down the show. So here's a demo of how it's going to work. It's fairly cut and dry. It goes from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. It calculates and then creates a count up. And regardless of where you are on the different scenes, it still shows that same count up amount. So you can pop around in all the different windows and still be aware of how much time has transpired during the show. Pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to show you how to set this up, and by you listening to this tutorial, you'll understand how to work the countdown and the count up. All right, here we go. 
Now I want to remind you that you have to have SNAS running and you have to have the appropriate tab running to show the specific stuff. So in this case, we're doing the countdown and then count up. And the first parameter is to define how much time you're counting down from. And in this demonstration, we're counting down from seven. And the output format is only seconds. And I don't want to show any zeros before the seven. So there is a parameter called remove time span equal to zero which means that any zeros before the seven will not show up. So I checked that off. I added a message when it does reach zero, which says we start now. And there's the reference to the text file that will bring into OBS in just a few seconds here. And now we go down to the section where it counts up. And the first thing that I want to do is check off auto start when chrono down reaches its end or reaches zero. So countdown goes to zero and then count up starts automatically and we have a custom format that has some text in front of the time we're going to be showing hours minutes and seconds because i think what the plan was is that we're going to watch the time count up to one hour and when the show reaches one hour visually we're going to manually put an end to the show okay so that is pretty much it except for one thing on the chrono up and that is before you start this thing on obs Always make sure that the zeros are showing in the done field here. So click this funky arrow and make sure, hit the stop button of course, make sure that you see nothing but zeros in those fields at the top, okay? Cool, now let's move this stuff into OBS so that you can do this for your own show. Ooh, let's go. Well, if you're new to my channel, you can think of me as a video software technology explorer. I'm on a constant quest to find all the super cool software so that you can apply it to your channel and make your videos super cool and super engaging. If you like what you hear, subscribe and click the bell for new video notification every single week yes okay here we are in obs i got two sources set up and i just want to go in here and show you how i set up the properties for these things so that you can get up and running for your own live stream i have two text gdi sources set up one is called countdown and the other one is called count up okay so let's go into the countdown i'll cl click it one time and right click and go into properties and what I did was set up the text initially. I just put a letter D in there. I set the color, the font, the, the font size. You know, you can put stroke in here. You can make it a gradient color by adding two colors. There's quite a lot of stuff. It's fun to play with. Enjoy it. Upon you creating the text that you want to see, then click the read from file checkbox. And you need to go and find the path to the appropriate text file that generates the dynamic text. In this case, it's the chronodown.txt file that I had to find when I clicked the browse button. Okay, so that's how I set that one up. And the other one, which is the count up, is the same thing pretty much. If I right click on it, go into properties, I set up the text and the color and everything and designated the correct path to the text file, which is chrono up. Okay, pretty simple. Now, one thing that you need to pay attention to is how the text is aligned in your screen. So what I mean by that is uh, during the countdown screen here, let me reinitiate it so you can see it real quick. I'll start it up here. So as you can see, it's one character, okay? And when it goes to the final message called We Start Now, it's centered on the page. If you don't center the text on the page, it's gonna look funky when it references that message at the end, okay? So how you do that is add your text into the screen and right click on it and select Transform Edit Transform. And these are the properties that I want you to use. Positional alignment should be top center. Bounding box should be scale to inner bounds, okay? That's important. And then alignment in bounding box should be top center. Make sure you set those things the way I just explained so that the text remains centered regardless of the amount of characters being printed on your screen, okay? Remember that. All right, cool, moving on. Now, as you can see, I have the count up text source showing up on the countdown screen, but you're probably gonna wanna add it to all your other scenes as well. That way, no matter what scene you're in, you still can see how much time is counting up so that you can end the show appropriately. So for example, I have a scene called Space, and I added that count up text source to the upper left-hand corner of the screen. 
which is great. So when it goes to a one hour, I can shut the show down and be good to go. Now, if you're interested in learning how to use the text line changer in SNAZ, or you want to put your system information into a live stream, click this link right here, and it'll take you to my next video where I will explain in perfect, clean, clear detail how to set that up in OBS. In the meantime, I wish you good fortune. Stay strong. Keep fighting. Don't give up. I've got your back. We will win together. Yes, stay strong and keep fighting.